be adding a more modern stereo to my truck, which has been kind of absent of any kind of sound system for years. Uh, and it's a little tricky because the original uh, profile for the uh, original radio that came with it is like this. And here's the mounting plate behind that. And I did not want to destroy this. I want to save this. So I had originally, in fact, before I showed this, I, I like monkeying around and fabricating metal and stuff. And I had done this, and it was a valiant effort. But you can see as I got deeper into it, um, and you can't really test this test fit this because there's so many there's so many bends to it um so you know it was a it was a you know it gets honorable mention but i'd gotten off just like a little right in the beginning and then that just adds up and cascades down through so after spending way too much time doing that um i decided to make just this little panel here for this right here which is a uh it's a pioneer got it at walmart um like 80 something dollars and i need to replace the speakers um whoops as well and these are i don't know they're 40 something dollars maybe again at walmart now this is an 83 f-150 so it's six and a half uh, inch speakers that are in here. Uh, this is the Pioneer. Um, you know, this is not necessarily about installing this Pioneer, more just about how you can make a plate. And you'll see that um, you've got to make this Z bend in here. And once you do, uh, it's it's just much easier with just a single panel. And then I might layer in the top and then the bottom as separate panels. But for right now, all I need to do is get something mounted in here and not destroy my original stuff. Um, and there are, you know, the, the more modern stuff with the big touch screen and the gazillion icons and apps, you know, would probably fit fit in here um but i didn't you know i just didn't want that i wanted something you know nice and nice and small so uh and so even those bigger ones you know you probably still they have a pretty good size they're that touchscreen face plate's pretty big on it and you know nonetheless you would still have to alter this and you know, I mean, if you want to go ahead, it's your, you know, it's your truck. I'm just thinking, you know, it'd be better off to just to save all this original stuff. And, uh, you know, and even if you, uh, even if you get one of the bigger, you want to get one of the bigger touchscreen ones, um, and you want to save your original, you know, uh, cover trim plate, you're still going to need to make something to mount the radio in to fill that space. So um, let me go over and show you how I did that in the vise. Okay, so I used my original metal mounting plate here as somewhat of a template and a guide. And just put, uh, again, I'm using aluminum. Uh, I just happen to have this and it was already coated and painted black with kind of a wrinkle finish on on one side so i just put some uh box tubing here and the um uh the bends work out just just great for it um so you know scribed a line and you know, gave it like a 45 degree bend backwards and then you know did it one more time dropped it back in there and bent it the other way because when it's all said and done you just need to have uh at the beginning and the end of the bend they just need to be in the same plane 
uh, and then th so this is the top that's in here this is this is the bottom and then a little just a little lip to to bend it over and then use this to mark the holes so i'll get this out and show you that all right so you can see uh here's my original one i'm using this box to get them to stand up straight but there's the um let's see maybe if i let some sun in it yeah there we go you can see how the bend of that and the bend of this are the same. And then I could just use this. You know, to get all my, uh, to mark my holes. And you'll see now it just screws right in place so let's go do that and then identify the wiring all right so here's our new fabricated panel installed and on this 83 and i imagine for a few years probably like um 80 81 or so 81 up to maybe 84 five, six, seven, somewhere in there, these, the, uh, the wiring harness and the colors are probably the same. Um, but I'll show you how you can find that out here in a second. Uh, on this, this 83 left speaker, left door speaker is, um, orange with, it looks like it's kind of like a green trace on it. And the right speaker is pink with a green trace on it and then speaker common is that black one right there that has a white trace uh on it uh let me put the uh, camera on a tripod and i'll show you how you can quickly uh confirm your wiring all right so i usually seem to be in in front of whatever I'm trying to demonstrate. But anyhow, we're gonna find, we're gonna verify the right-hand speaker wiring between the um, hot and the common. So as I told you before, the uh, pink with a green stripe on our original 83 harness at the radio, that is our right side hot. So in the door, uh, and the color, the trace colors are so close, it's hard to tell. But at the speaker, uh, and I've cut the plug off, uh, the hot is black with a white uh, trace. And the speaker common, then, of course, is the other one. We have our speaker common at the uh, radio connector that's black with a white trace. And... You know, it looks like they did keep that, um, co uh, <laughs> kept that same theme. So black with a white trace at the speaker is the common. And then the hot is, um, you got kind of a, a green tint to it, but they're so close. It's hard to, hard to tell them apart. Um, so on the subject of the speakers, you can see here, let's see, <laughs> am I in here? Yeah, you can see, uh, here's what I pulled out of here. I said this truck uh, sat for years with the windshield out, uh, blown out of it and a tarp on it. And you can see what happened there. And these, can we see this here? It's 3.2 ohms, so you need to be careful of your uh, speaker selection. Um, the unit I'm putting in works with between 2 and 4 ohms. And let's see, do these say, uh, yeah, these are 4 ohm impedance. So 3.2 um, and 4, that's, that's close enough. And in fact, a little bit higher is is actually a little bit uh, better. Cuts down your power some, but hey, who's gonna be blasting this anyhow? Um, so, of course, these holes do not line, 
these holes do not line up so we're gonna have to what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna bend these i'm gonna bend these tabs over a little bit so um you know this was ford factory installed but um you know you'd think they would have you know used a a, a bore you know linear pattern uh but uh they did not so these you know those tabs don't let it sit down necessarily flush and i think what i'm gonna do because they didn't have much ford didn't have much more they just had this thin layer of like a foamy rubber um, I'm going to put just maybe some electrical tape around there. Oh, here's my cat. Hey, Yoda. How you doing? See you later. Um, I'm going to bend these tabs over a little bit and uh, mark the holes and drill them out. And uh, then we'll get these speakers in and I'll have to put some uh, terminals on the end of this. All right, so as tempting as it is, do not drill all the way your holes. Um, you should actually just scribe them out. But I used this screw to hold the speaker in place so I could use the speaker itself as a template to locate my other holes. So I just did a quick little drill there and a quick little drill there i was going to use this guy but decided to space him like that so i'd have at least three holding it in so um this is steel so of course your magnet and your speaker that that's just gonna go you don't want metal in your speaker regardless uh so mark your holes and then drill them out now, I'm using the original size screws, so generally what I do is just find a bit that is the same diameter as the core of the screw, so that way it gets a really good bite. So I think this ended up being a 764. Um, I can't really see it on the, uh, on the bit, so um, that's the method I use to figure out what bit to use. Uh, and again, these are the original screws. So, uh, test fit them and, uh, you know, screw them through once just to make sure they work. And, uh, and I'm going to put my tape on there and, and that be that. All right. So holes are drilled and I put some very good electrical tape around there the scotch 3m stuff um i do have some strip caulk and i thought about <laughs> using that but honestly <laughs> the tape was right here and uh <laughs> i didn't want to go get it <laughs> and uh that strip caulk can be i don't want to use it up on something <laughs> like this i kind of want to save it for for other things because it's just not something you can walk right into the store, any store and buy, you know, you got to go to the auto, uh, paint body supply, uh, to get it. So there we go. I'm going to, uh, get my connectors on and mount the speaker. Uh, so my other concern with these speakers was this tweeter and I was hoping it, uh, it would sit back a little more because, I was hoping with this thing recessed and the panel pressed out, the door panel pressed out the way it would, that all this would sit back further, but I'm pretty sure this is going to hit on the backside of my panel here, but let's find out. Maybe that's, maybe there is a gap in between. Yeah, it looks like we're okay. When I shine a light on our maybe right there we can see there's our there's our tweeter there and uh and we got plenty of room. You can actually even just space the space the door panel out a little bit. Um and 
none would be the wiser so but that is something to keep in mind you want that um you know if you get coaxials triaxials whatever you want to make sure that that sits back um as flush as possible because the door panel could interfere with that and just to check yeah, there we go. 4.1, 4 ohms, so we are good. All right, uh, so use your directions for your particular model to uh, find your speaker pair wires. I just usually twist them together. Uh, and I have to look back myself now as to which pair of these is right and left. Um, now, as far as power goes, um, this yellow here is our switched accessory. So that is what will turn the radio on and off uh, with the key. And then we need another constant hot because um, I'm pretty sure this thing has a clock in it. So I'm going to borrow from the... Uh, uh, cigarette lighter for my constant hot and then of course uh, find a good uh, chassis ground and get that hooked up in fact do that first always get your ground figured out and hooked up first okay news flash on your speaker wiring just kind of forget about your speaker common and honestly kind of forget about your original wiring uh, as to which of uh, your original colors here were, were left and right uh, because you cannot tie your speaker commons, uh, your speaker negatives. I'm not even going to call them common. Your speaker negatives for left and right, um, you know, they are indeed separate entities. And here, I wouldn't say it's buried in the middle, but it's not like standing out like other places where they put important, um, never band together negative cables of multiple speakers. Well, I had, um, you know, earlier I showed you, hey, here's your, here's your speaker common and, um, you know, the pink and green is your right and the orange and green or whatever color stripe is on there. Uh, is your left, uh, doesn't matter. Now, I had already used shrink tubing, soldered and used shrink tubing on these uh, connectors, and I was running low on shrink tubing, so I didn't want to cut these again. Um, but I did end up running um, separate, separate grounds. And uh, what you should really do is just run new speaker wire. Forget about your original wiring and just run new speaker wire to each side. Um, and any place you do need to make connections, because this is like, this is finer than than 24 gauge, whatever this. Um, the wires that come on the uh, harness with the new radio. And like I said, this is a Pioneer but I'm sure anything is like this with very fine wiring. Um, the only way you're going to get those connections to make is to uh, solder them and put shrink tubing on them. So you can see I still, you know, I have my positives for left and right. I do have them uh, using the original ones back out to the harness but seriously um just go ahead and and do this all right so there it is all installed and i even managed to in the process mount my gauges and throw my uh instrument uh trim panel back in and i am holding off on the uh, uh dashboard for now because like 500 dollars, and uh that's just an awful lot to spend on a 
a dash pad. Um, but anyhow, uh, there it is, and it sounds good. I got it on talk radio. days. I managed to escape and evade for the first five days before I was finally captured. And so there's somebody's interesting, compelling story on talk radio. Um, so as I showed you before, how to, you know, make that panel and I'm, I'm kind of in a rush cause I'm having to make another trip. Um, I would like to, you know, I'd like to find a piece that didn't have holes in it there. Uh, but again, you know, I mean, I'm not all that worried about it. Um, but I would like to make another panel that comes down and covers that. And then when I'm all done here, I'll tuck the, uh, heater and air conditioning controls in and that will is going to be the next project i will be updating and modernizing and getting ac working in this again i'm going to put a sand and compressor in here so stay tuned for that um but uh maybe the next time you see it who knows i might even have a panel covering here and all this installed and another panel there but for right now the whole thing was just to show you um, how to not destroy your original, uh, panel, be able to retain that and put something in that's, uh, you know, reasonably good, <laughs> good looking. Um, if you can live with screws <laughs> staring out at you, um, uh, you know, caution you on the speaker wiring here and, um, there you go. So I hope you, uh, enjoyed this and found it useful and helpful and i need to get ready to make a 250 mile ride in this so uh, now i'll have some musica to listen to see you on the next one